three twenty nine nine, and I gotta get three and a quarter, and I will get three and a quarter. Um, so this is daylight windows, or it's not, but I, I didn't even explain it. Ours is just like probably. If you're going to succeed, you have to take risks. It's they go hand in hand, and you have to fail. In fact, the faster you fail, the faster you succeed because you'll figure out what works and what doesn't work. You apply for a hardship rental, and you can only do that for a short period of time, like a year. I mean, you're probably making it on there for 15 seconds. Half price for a five-year contract. I'm like, how about no contract? Because I'm not interested. So I can remember exactly where I was the morning of September 11th, and it really shifted the mindset of this country. It made people think about what do I need to do to protect my family, myself. 104, which if you extrapolate that, that would have been 232,000 that we listed at, but yeah. we listed at 220. You know, well, once you get past the the fear that something's going to happen to your family, then you start thinking about, okay, how can I best care for my family? And that's what led me to think about food. Well, and I really appreciate your time today, sir. All right, thank you, Tim. Have a good weekend. You too, sir. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Two minutes and 33 seconds to make a $25,000 contract. We went from 90% of our country growing food, whether for themselves or for a business, to 2%. And there's no food security in this country. Grocery stores are set up to carry about seven days worth of food. And I realized that I had to source materials from all over the United States and other countries just to have fresh food. And that's, that's not good, that's not food security. So this pineapple that probably came from South America is not fresh. They ship it unripe so that it can ripen when you get it. So you know it's not the healthiest. It's just what you can get. And you gotta just deal with it. In fact, look, it started to rot in the middle. I can't eat that. There we go. Look at the waste. All that's wasted because it rotted between the time it was picked and the time I got to eat it. Taste up. It's very, it's not edible. It's already gone bad. So, here, here, you want to follow up. So, that's all food waste right there. All wasted. Oranges, product of California. Orange juice, Brazil. Cherries, product of Turkey. Blueberries, product of Chile. Santa Cruz, California. With the exception of the orange, oranges and the orange juice, cherries, blueberries, strawberries, they all grow right here, right here in Dayton, Ohio. Why do we have to get it from across the world? If you think about it in nature, how does the rabbit eat the spinach? He eats it right out of the ground. He eats it while it's still alive. If you buy spinach at the store that came from California or from Texas, it's probably lost almost all of its nutritional value by the time you get it. And when you try to eat healthy, you're told to eat apples, oranges, orange juice, things of that nature, but we're not growing it domestically. We should be eating the stuff that we can grow out of the soil right under our feet. Why do I have to go to Brazil? Because you can't do organic honey in the United States. Because the bee flies three miles. And if you make a three mile circle around any place in the United States where, honey, where bees are, there's traditional agriculture, there's chemistry, can't call it organic. So it's just how it is. We know that the nutrition in the soil is getting worse and worse. That's why we have to pump up all of our produce with more and more chemistry to make stuff grow. People are tired of getting sick and having to, to rely on chemicals and doctors, and they're afraid for their children. So I thought if I wanted to make sure that I had truth in the food I was eating, the ultimate way to do that was to grow it myself. In 2011, we began the search to move into a more uh, rural location. We came into some money where we were able to invest, and just before Christmas, a home came available that had been sold, and we made them an offer of what we could afford, and they took it. It's very exciting because it's 30 acres that can be farmed. There's already an existing old orchard on the property that needs a lot of help. 
So this is the remnant of the old orchard back here. It's been very neglected. The guys are just too busy doing other things to take care of it. This tree is really suffering from apple scab. It just can't really, it can't really sustain itself at this point. Now here's one that's gonna make it. I cannot imagine how many apples are gonna come off this thing this year. In fact, if you have too many, they'll be too small and they won't be any good. So you wanna prune it so that it can put its energy into just a couple really big branches. It's a pretty tree though. The ultimate is going to be a six acre orchard. It should all look like that. Primarily it's going to be berries, vines, uh, fruit trees. And we wanna invite in all of nature, the, the pollinators, we want the birds. We want the snakes, the frogs. We want everything on property because they all help keep things in a balance and they all actually feed one another. And I'm gonna close the south side. You will not see houses. Once you're on property, you'll see nature and you'll see one house and a couple buildings and that's it. But of course we're taking risks because one minute away from business to focus on something else, maybe something more worthy is a minute that I can't get back. I wanna help people to help themselves to have a healthy family. That's the one thing that I want, and food plays a huge part of that. The simplest thing you can do is research edible landscape. You can get a, a bag of seeds or a box of seeds. Uh, there are seed saver clubs where you can share with other people. You can learn how to graft from one tree to another, one vine to another. Go to the library, get a couple books about uh, how to raise vegetables or how to plant a tree or whatever and get started. The ultimate for me would be somebody comes on site, they learn how to, to help me harvest the food and enjoy it, and then they say, you know what? I took a third of my yard and I started my own orchard. That would be success to me.